Now, dears, uh, in the previous video, we missed the complication of peptic culture disease. That is also important all the exam. Complications of PUD. Remember, one is hemorrhage. We will lose a lot of blood. We can have iron deficiency anemia later. Or it can cause perforation. Perforation. In perforation, what you see in the x-ray, we can see hair in diaphragma. Hair in diaphragm. So in the case of perforation, we will combine, not only we have to prevent the infection, so we give PPI plus antibiotic like piperazolin or tazobactam plus vancomycin and we do what surgery to prevent the future or like other complications. So these are most common complications of peptic ulcer disease is what? Hemorrhage, right? And remember, don't just treat the patient. If a patient come with the signs and symptoms and not alarming, first of all, we give the lifestyle, like don't drink alcohol, don't smoke, right? Don't eat spicy foods, right? Then we give PPI. PPI we have already talked in the GERD. For prophylaxis, we give low dose PPI always, like small dose, right? High dose PPI always for what? Treatment of peptic ulcer disease or for remember, Barrett's esophagus and all. So, this video, we are talking about inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So, there are two types mainly, one is called ulcerative colitis, we call it as ulcerative colitis, second is called Crohn's, Crohn's disease. Remember, ulcerative colitis means mainly what is inflamed here, colon, right? So, it is an inflammation in between uh, colon as well as what is also inflamed here, uh, rectum. Like rectum, this area, rectum and colon mainly affect, two organs are mainly affected, rectus, mainly colitis, colitis, right? So, it will be a continuous lesion, we call it as no skipping continuous inflammation talking about Crohn's it can be from mouth to anus mouth to anus but it won't be everywhere it will be a skip lesion skip lesion but mainly they affect if they ask one part we say it is terminal ileum mainly affected mainly affected in ulcerative colitis the intestine or colon look like a lead pipe appearance. You will have an appearance called lead pipe. But remember, in Crohn's, it looks like a cobblestone. Cobblestone appearance. They look like a cobblestone. Talking about ulcerative colitis, they will form you some superficial, superficial crypts and abscess. Crypts plus abscess. The main thing, there is some pseudo polyps form. Pseudo means false. Pseudo polyps. Never forget, they will cause you bloody diarrhea. My God, they will cause you bloody diarrhea. But talking about arcelative, it is like more deep. They affect all wall of intestine. It is called transmural. Every wall is affected here every wall. It will cause you weight loss and all. Along with weight loss, they will cause you watery diarrhea, not bloody. So in any exam, if they ask you bloody diarrhea and you have to choose between Crohn's and ulcerative, the answer is always what? Ulcerative colitis. Now, for screening, we do colonoscopy, right? Colonoscopy for be screening. One of the complications of ulcerative colitis is toxic megacolon, very important toxic mega colon because the release of in the colon will be releasing nitric oxide nitric oxide release that will make the colon that is called toxic mega colon if someone asks you the complication of Crohn's we can suspect they will form fistulas because all the walls are affected here fistula and ulcerative colitis if you don't treat if you don't do screening what you do colonoscopy you must be very careful and you have to rule out or make sure the patient didn't get what colon cancer because in ulcerative colitis there is a high risk of colon cancer 
risk is high but there is no risk for cancer cancer risk is low in what crohn's disease in crohn's disease as we have told terminal ileum is mainly affected so the problem is you will have problem with vitamin b12 so the problem in myelin sheath or nervous system spinal cord degeneration everything the problem with the bile salt so the problem with the what fat absorption fat absorption along with the suspect the problem in what duodenum so that you have problem like iron deficiency anemia proximal duodenum the problem with the calcium so patient can have what osteopenia or osteoporosis so you can connect the problems right vitamin b12 problem comes with what crohn's disease megaloblastic anemia or macrocytic anemia can be related here right so that's all about and how you screen you do colonoscopy here in the case of crohn's you can't even see it was so transmural here uh, for ulcerative you can clearly see from colonoscopy what is happening in what intestine then very important association here for ulcerative colitis extra intestinal manifestation primary sclerosing cholangitis they are positive for p anga and psc positive psc means primary sclerosing cholangitis positive this antibody think about think about what ulcerative colitis mainly associate so this is the main difference between ulcerative colitis and what crohn's disease now we will go for how we manage them so ibd is very important so crohn's and all if you don't treat it it can become cancer right so you treat this according to the severity right we can divide as mild moderate and severe cases for mild cases we give anti inflammatory like what 5 asa acetyl salicylic acid or meslamine meslamine mainly for ulcerative colitis mainly we can give both then this is for crohn's mainly we prefer and for moderate we use what immune modulators like mercaptopurin the drugs like azathioprine azathioprine or candy cancer drug like methotrexate we can give the patient methotrexate for severe cases we use a tumor necrosis factor inhibitors there is something called immune modulators infliximab monoclonal antibody modulators remember the patient will have tb as a side effect or risk if a patient have risk of tb make sure you don't give this drug or screen for tb in this patient then then uh, normally so we have classified the disease into mild moderate and severe so this how you treat what the patient with what ibd then one more drugs like you can use six for flares and all we can use one more that is called six mercaptopurin for acute flares or refractory cases refractory or coming and recurrent cases we can use steroids to suppress it steroid can be used and for like infections if some may closely difficile and all come you can use clarithromycin and metronidazole to prevent what infection if we have talked sometime they can have a toxic megacolon for that what we give toxic megacolon we, we have to suppress it by giving what steroids prednisolone or glucocorticoid and for fistula we have to give iv fluids and electrolytes P patient will be losing iv fluids as well as electrolytes
So this is how we mainly cover what? People with what? IBD. So these are the main important one. We have to know the difference and how you what? Manage the patient. Hopefully that's all about what? Inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis and what? Crohn's disease. Thank you.